All right, uh, good morning everyone. Thanks for coming for uh, day two of uh, the, the Petroleum Congress here in Calgary. Uh, we'll get started here shortly. Uh, we're going to be talking about real-time reporting and uh, how that reduces project risk and costs on our projects. Uh, my name is Heinz Abnett. I am one of the directors at SanCon Commissioning. Uh, current role is Chief Development Officer here at SanCon. Uh, next slide, Pete, if you would. So uh, some of the things we're going to talk about today is uh, how we're going to reduce risk. And uh, I'll, I'm going to go through this quite a bit faster than 60 minutes just uh, to keep everyone engaged. But uh, we're going to track how we track earned and burned progress throughout a project, how we calculate our discipline efficiencies, and how we forecast uh, based off these earned burned values to, to, throughout the project in real time. So uh, next slide, Pete. Uh, one question I'll quickly ask the audience, I mean, it, there's a few people here and I know we, uh, we're, we're tech companies for the most part, but how many people out there see companies using software, or digital software for real-time reporting within commissioning or turnarounds? It, it's becoming the norm, right? We're seeing a lot more companies using digital process, digital check sheets, digital tracking, and we like to see this trend in the industry because it, it creates that real-time report, that real-time status update. So the next thing we really need to identify is what, what is earned hours? What is earned hours when we talk commissioning? And so what we want to do here is we want to really look at the, the activities that are scheduled in, in the commissioning process. Yeah. So our static, our dynamic checks, our walk downs, our operational supports, any vendor checks that we're going to be doing, any witness points, other inspections, whether it be you know, vendors or vessels. And we really need to identify what is going to be the earned hours in this project. This is going to be our baseline for our schedule. So how do we come up with earned hours? So earned hours are common methods to track work for completion. So, you know, in the back in the day, we and we still see it on a lot of projects, you know, Excel spreadsheets, access databases. We're moving towards completion softwares, which is which is a bonus for this. I mean, there's different uh, methods that we've seen in the past. I mean, I still was at a site not that long ago, and they're still highlighting P and IDs and single lines, which is is terrible to, to say it, but it's it's pretty archaic. So we we want to be moving towards digital completions, so we can actually see our hours to earn. So next slide, Pete. Uh, So when, when we're building our commissioning schedules, we need to break this down to a system-based level. From the systems, we can then break it down to discipline, and then by discipline, we can then get down to the specific activity within the commissioning scope. So as our check sheets are getting completed in the field, the progress of these earned hours are gonna be calculated. Next slide. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna give you an example. We got an instrument air system in a project. We're gonna break it down to a discipline of our electrical contractor. And then we're gonna say within this electrical contractor, there's 125 hours of static check sheets. Now we're gonna ask, where do, we, where do we get 125 hours for static check sheets? So we go to the next slide. We have what we call norm hours or normalized hours to complete specific tasks. So, Within the electrical discipline, we'll have electrical check sheets, and these check sheets are going to be broken down into specific check sheets. We'll have bro breakers, MCCs, our components, heat trace, and each one of these checks is going to have a specific hour associated that they need to take to complete them. So that's going to be our norm hours. That's going to be our baseline for activities to complete these tasks. Earned hours are then the hours to when, when these checks are completed, we've earned these hours in the system. So as these check sheets are being completed in the schedule, we're earning these hours. Then we need to look at burned hours. So our burned hours are the man hours, that the physical man hours it takes for our people to complete these checks. So it's, it's key, you know, these are, these are static checks, dynamic checks, other planned activities, walk downs, MDPs. These are planned hours in this schedule and these are burned hours as, the, as they're completing the checks. So if we go to the next slide, Pete, and there'll be a few slides here. So again, when we look at burned hours, 
Our burned hours have to be tracked to the exact same level as the check sheets of the earned hours in the schedule. So as our technicians are completing check sheets in the field, their time sheets have to be built in the same facet that attracts the system, the discipline, and the activity. So that can be dynamic, dynamic, static, and the, the rest of the activities, MDA hours that we might be completing for the burned hours. So the timesheet system needs to correlate to the schedule and the earned hours. So if we go to the next slide, here's a burned hours example. So our, our technicians are in the field. They're working on the instrument air system, the select the instrument air system. Their discipline is electrical, which will select their electrical, electrical background. And then they'll do, they're doing static checks on that particular air compressor package. So we're, they're, they're going to they're going to put their time in and they're going to burn 119 hours commissioning that instrument air system. Now we're going to look at our, our earned versus burn. We're going to calculate our efficiencies because our efficiencies are going to dictate everything that we're doing as we're progressing through the project. So our work completion, we know we had 125 hours within the instrument air package for our electrical team to commission. When we compare that against our timesheet system, and our timesheet system says that these technicians have burned 119 hours, we now are able to calculate our efficiencies and how we're tracking on the project. So if we take our 125, divide that by 19, 119, we get 105% efficiency. So we know we're 1.05% efficient as, as we're executing through the, this initial piece. Now, we'll, we'll see this change throughout the project. We'll see it go up, we'll see it go down. When we start to see large delays, if we're, you know, we're, we're well under one, we need to start questioning why, why our efficiencies are low. And we're going to see this in the next, next slide here. here here's a, some project data. And, and we can see this as, as we look across the top. We have our earned hours, our actual, and any growth hours incurred. And it's, it's, it's very crucial that we, we track growth because growth, growth needs to be calculated for out of scope activities, we, we need to that needs to be present in as we're reviewing our efficiencies on the project. So we're able to calculate efficiencies both daily and weekly when we when we look at this. We'll keep going through. So what what's the importance of this? Why why do we need to do this? Why do we need to track this efficiency so regularly? So when we do this, we get actually real-time reporting. So with the completion system, that's tracked in real time as technicians are completing the check sheets, these are being uploaded. We're able to pull these reports off the database and get that real-time report on our project efficiency. With that real-time reporting, it's not, you know, there's long, long past the days where we say, yeah, we're at 70%, 80%, 75, and they just seem to progress 2% every day, it seems like, as we're moving through the project. This is this takes away that ambiguity. This is real-time. Anyone can create these calculations. We're not relying on someone to fudge the numbers. As a project team, they know how we're progressing. As we come up with hurdles, we have, say, a vendor package. It's full of deficiencies. And all of a sudden, it's, you know, our efficiencies are 0 0.5, 0 0.6. You know, we, we know early on uh, that we need to make a change. And, and my business partner, he, he uses a, a slogan from the offshore that's it's a great, great analogy. Is when you see an iceberg coming towards a, a platform, you know, w when it's a long ways away, it takes a small, small push with a tug to, to set that off course from colliding with the, the platform. But when we actually, if we wait and we, we procrastinate that we're not, we're going to make it, we're going to make up this time, we're going to make up this time, it takes a really big push at the end and it's very unlikely that you're going to make the difference and without spending a ton of money or, or bringing in manpower or whatever it might be to make those dates. So we want to make these, these small tweaks, small changes. could be something as simple as bringing in, you know, the construction vendor to go through a package pre-com, pre, pre some of the deficiencies that we're constantly finding. We might have be issues with permitting, long delays to get across the site. We need to set up a new tool crib on the other side of the location because it's taking too long to get the teams across the site. So we want to make small tweaks early on or th and throughout the project to make sure we get this real-time reporting on the project. It's transparent. Everyone in the team knows where we're at. Stakeholders need to know where we're at throughout the project. It's not this black box that we're trying to hide. Real-time reporting is so everybody knows where we're at. We have the data we need to make the changes throughout the project. And it's informed decision-making. Nowadays, with supply chain issues, we need you know vendors, equipment. We need to be reporting in real-time. If we need to make shifts or changes to dates for specialty vendors, equipment suppliers, we need to have that data early so that we're able to make these changes for third-party resources at the time we need them. So, next slide, Pete, if you will. 
This is real, real data, real project data from a project we did. This project was a TIC project, about $1.4 billion. Uh, the CSU budget for this project came in at $32 million. When we were, were commissioning this project, at about 60% of the project completion, we had an original first steam date at August 10th. We were able to forecast on March 3rd that we were actually going to hit first steam on July 16th based on the project reporting and the scheduling that we had. And we actually hit first steam on July 14th. So with real-time reporting, we're actually able and capable of making these kind of commitments to the leadership team, our investors, at, at about 60% of the project. So. We're getting, we're able to inform our investors, we're able to make sure the project team has, the operations staff has the operations people in place, the maintenance teams are prepared for the, the changes in these dates. Bring these projects ahead of schedule, they're hitting milestone dates, they're hitting target nameplates, you know, ahead of schedule, so they're actually earning their, their commissioning budgets back before they're actually even original targeted first steam dates. So quick little recap, why, why is effective cost controls and real-time reporting important? Real-time reporting allows us to get accurate, efficient data back. We have schedule confidence. So as our partners here at Advando will stand behind, our schedule is everything. And if, if our data in our schedule is not true, the schedule doesn't mean much. It's, it's, it's a, essentially a big fake piece of paper. So we need accurate data in our schedule. And what that leads to is cost reduction and reduced project risk. So and with that, I, uh, I really will open the floor. Is there, is there questions to how we've executed this in the past or how this can be successful to a project? No worries. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, and that, that, that's a great question, and, and that is key, is getting this process implemented as early as possible in, in the process, and we, we need the commissioning contractors and the project management team as a whole on board with this process, so the, you know, when it comes to systemized turnovers and you know, how is construction progressing on the construction side of the check sheets, what are we going to hit for systemized turnover dates, that will affect everything. I mean, we're, we're able to see huge efficiencies in being able to you know pull schedule to the left, uh, we did we did a quick presentation yesterday, and it kind of ties directly into this uh, on early works. Is if we can get in early on the project, pull that schedule to the left, those precom activities are getting done systematically. We're actually able to save three to five percent of the commissioning budget right off the bat just from completing pre pre turnover work or systematic turnover based off of early works. Any other questions? Okay. Well, without that, thanks for everybody for coming by today. Second show, we'll be back again tomorrow. So thanks again. Thank you, Heinz. And uh, you probably noticed throughout Heinz's presentation that the philosophies of success in commissioning and the philosophies of success in turnarounds are identical. And if you don't start well in advance and you don't build to a plan and you don't execute the plan, you will not have success, whether you're commissioning or turning around, it's the same thing. So this kind of lines up why we're partnered up with Sandcon. Have a good day, we'll be back in another hour.